You know, you don't hear the term legendary tossed around very much, even at a school with a football past as rich as it is here at Nebraska. But a few men have played on this field and have earned the legendary term, people like Rich Glover and Larry Jacobson, who were Outland Trophy winners. This season, another man may have earned the same legendary tag. His name is David Remington, and he's a center. And as a junior, he won the Outland Trophy as the best interior lineman in America. And already, people are starting to call some of David Remington's feats legendary. David Remington has attracted a lot of attention on and off the football field. That's not surprising because he is big, 6'3", 280 pounds. Yet it is surprising because he plays center. And centers are supposed to earn bruises, not publicity. But David Remington changed that this season. Look at his list of awards. All Big 8 center. The Big 8 Offensive Player of the Year. A center had never won that award before. First team on several All-America teams. The Outland Trophy winner as the best interior lineman in the nation. Few juniors have won the Outland. And Academic All-America. He carries a 3.3 grade point average as an economics major. Even Bob Hope knows who he is. Dave Remington, Center, University of Nebraska. Dave's the strongest man in college football. He not only bench presses 450 pounds, in the Oklahoma game, with one block, he lifted 50,000 people to their feet. <laughs> Now that you've had a couple of weeks to sit back and uh, and think about it, what's your reaction to all the awards? Well, they're, I think they're, they're great. You know, it's, it's it's a dream for an athlete to to get at the awards, but uh, you always have to live up to them. And it's come time right now we got to forget about them and prepare for the game. It's you know it's fun to get the awards, but like I said, it's time to face reality now. As fans, we know very little about centers. They are anonymous, so we create stereotypes. We perceive them as powerful brutes who solemnly endure punishment with no fanfare. It's hard to believe they enjoy their position. But David Remington wrecks the stereotype. He's so good, he is noticed. And although his position is statistically unrewarding, Remington seems to have a good time on the football field. I had a lot of fun, and we won the last, what, eight games or eight, nine games or something like that. So. That was the main thing. I think once we started winning, it, it, was, it was all fun again. And in the first couple games, we were having problems, and it wasn't that much fun. Big 8 players didn't have much fun playing Remington. Oklahoma remembers. Watch the right side of the screen here. The Sooner linebacker comes up to meet the play, but Remington sends him right out of the picture. Bill Bates easily scores the touchdown. Many other Big 8 players received the same kind of treatment from Remington, and their coaches noticed. The conference asked all Big 8 coaches to pick the one player they would start their imaginary team with. Four of the eight said Dave Remington. But his own coach paid him perhaps the greatest compliment. He ought to be better next year than he is this year. And uh, he could be one of the best centers that ever played football, I think. Siouxland has made two contributions to this year's Orange Bowl team, and they're kind of interesting contributions, because when you consider that this team is known for its speed and its muscle, well, the Siouxland contribution is with a foot. Lynn Schoening and Kevin Seibel, their stories as contrasting as their sizes, as varied as their kicking styles. Junior Lynn Schoening made the Huskers as a walk-on, after kicking for Terry Stevens at Sioux City East. <laughs> He hasn't grown much since high school, but his old East High teammates may not recognize him on the field. Shoning now kicks without a shoe. I tried it after my freshman year down here, and I seemed to kick a little more consistent. And I thought, well, I'm going to need a little more help down here with all the people trying out. And since this is a pretty big school and everything, so I, uh, I tried it, and I seemed to do pretty well with it, so I stuck with it. Shoning says he has kicked well this season. Unfortunately, he did all his kicking in practice because he's third string behind Eddie Neal and Seibel. But Neal graduates after the season, so Shoning hopes to get some extra kicking duty next season. But most of all, he's very happy to be part of an Orange Bowl team. I've never been to, to Florida or anywhere or even in a big airplane, so this is going to be quite a, quite a trip for me. It'll be awful exciting. I'm really excited right now to go. The foot, whether barefoot or covered, has an unlikely partner in the kicking game, the head. This season, Vermillion's Kevin Seibel discovered the head indeed may be more important than the foot. People never noticed Kevin Seibel's head or even his foot very much. It was his size that amazed football people. A 240-pound kicker, a big man inhabiting the small man's only domain in football. Some called him a cinch all-America. But 1981 became a nightmare for Kevin Seibel. 
He missed two field goals in the opener against Iowa. Most wrote off his problems as a little slump until he missed three field goals in the Missouri game. Then Kevin Seibel lost his place kicking job. Kind of started off bad and went downhill from there, but I have no idea what went wrong. And uh, after that, it just was really tough to come back. And, and uh, Eddie Neal started kicking after that, and he's done a really good job. And so I just really haven't had a chance to prove myself that I can still do it. Seibel has turned to himself primarily during his kicking crisis, relearning the fundamentals he learned as a small boy in Vermilion. He didn't worry about slumps then. He was starting a family tradition. I started when I was eight, and my dad uh, enrolled me in the punt, pass, and kick program. And ever since then, every time somebody turns eight, that's when they start kicking. And, uh, in the Seibel family? That's right. <laughs> so, you know, I've been kicking since then, and I haven't really stopped because it goes up to age 13, and by that time I was in high school or the eighth grade or whatever, and, and I was, you know, kicking for that team. And so ever since I was eight, I've been kicking, and, and so have all my brothers, and that's really how it all started, and it's really kind of a tradition. And uh, it was a really big deal when my little brother Carl turned eight, because it's been a little while since uh, Seibel turned eight and started punt, pass, and kick. Seibel will kick off and kick extra points in the Orange Bowl. He's happy to contribute in any way and insists he hasn't dreamed about making a game-winning kick that would redeem the whole season, at least not yet. I've thought about it. It's, I've had them like earlier in the year when I, when I first got taken out of my job. I had those little dreams, I guess, but I, lately I haven't had any. And um, maybe as the game gets closer, I'll probably start thinking like that.